Hello everybody, this is Absolutely Absurd here and today I want to present you guys a video about the math behind King's Chain Throws. This video is going to be giving you a complete understanding of how King's most common and best chain throws work and how you as a defender can force the King player into making worse decisions and limit how much damage they can get on you. If you like these type of videos, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and comment if you have any other thoughts. Thanks and let's get right into it. Disclaimer, this presentation was made during the 1.02.01 patch and was updated slash presented during the 1.07 patch. Some statements may be outdated. If any of the math is wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments. First, let's talk about throws. Throws are a unblockable high attack that can be broken within 20 frames of the throw connecting. The throw always has a certain animation that tells you what button you need to use in order to break it. If their left hand is going forward, it needs to be broken with one. If their right hand is going forward, it needs to be broken with two. And if both hands are going forward, it needs to be broken with one plus two. Chain throws are different, however. Chain throws is not just one throw and then it's over. They start a sequence of throws that each need to be teched. And, unlike other throws, which have a visual cue as to what the break is, after the first initial throw, there is no visual cue, and you must guess. Most people really, really hate chain throws because they can result in very high damage and take a million of years to finish. People are already struggle to tech throws normally in Tekken, since they're so different from most other fighting games, and chain throws add this to this frustration greatly. And Tekken 8 makes it even worse. Before, throws used to track, which was a big point of contention in the Tekken community. But counter hit throws still exist, and they reduce the throw break window from 20 frames to 14. This makes it even more difficult, especially since most throw breaks usually land somewhere in the 17 to 18 frame window. Most people are just unable to tech counter hit throws, which can make getting hit by a counter hit chain throw deadly. On top of that, with Tekken 8, even for long-time Tekken players, being throws being difficult to break, this is a new game with new players, which means the community overall has worse breaks than before, which causes King to reign supreme with his throws. However, with expected value, we can go ahead and break down how King works. And no worries, this is not going to take a bunch of math on your end, I already did it. I did the numbers so that you can no longer get tossed over and over and over again. Let's get into expected value. As defined by Jim Frost, the expected value in statistics is the long-run average outcome of a random variable based on its possible outcomes and their respective probabilities. Essentially, if an experiment, like a game of chance, were repeated, the expected value tells us the average result we'd see in the long run. Essentially, this factors in how much value we could expect to get out of this. Let's say we're playing a game that has a slot machine, and if we win, we get $5. If we lose, we lose $3. The expected value would tell us how much money we can expect to gain over using that slot machine a certain amount of times. The expected value in a Tekken context works perfectly for chain throws. The expected value would be the expected amount of damage each throw option gives you, factoring in the probability of the throw being teched. For example, by the time you've successfully landed a Scorpion Deathlock, including the amount of times your Scorpion Deathlock was teched, you should have gotten 18.15 damage, which means you should have went plus 18.15 damage. More on this later. How this helps us beat King is that we now know what options we need to tech. Knowing King's best options tells us what we should break. If the opposing King doesn't understand this, you have complete control over the opponent's chain throws. And in fact, even if the King does understand this, the defender always has the most influence as to how this chain throw will end. In fact, you determine it entirely. The King has to operate within your limits. Let me explain. This is King's chain throws chart. I will leave a link to where I found this chain throw chart. It was in a YouTube video made by Majin Obama. Make sure to subscribe to his channel. Again, the link will be in the description. Um, and all this looks very complicated, but no worries. I did the math so you don't have to, and only three of these routes are important anyway. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can defend ourselves against these throws. First, we'll start with the standing heel hold. The standing heel hold starts with the two break, and if you fail the two break, you are now presented with three different options. There's the STF, the Indian Deathlock, and the Scorpion Deathlock. However, we can ignore the Indian Deathlock, since the Indian Deathlock guarantees King's Bridge. So essentially, we can just consider the three options to be the STF, which is the one break, the King's Bridge, which is the one plus two break, and the Scorpion Deathlock, which is the two break. This is a good starting point to understand, since this is the simplest chain throw. There are three options, and you have to pick one. If we look at the expected value, as we can clearly see, the King's Bridge has by far the highest value because it has the most damage while having the same chance of being teched as the others. This means that the STF is the least valuable option and the King's Bridge is the most valuable option, so you never want to get hit by the King's Bridge. If you are going to go for the King's Bridge, it's essentially a 50-50, as the STF and the Scorpion Deathlock's damage is only a difference in 5. 
This is designed in a specific way because it's all about whether you're going to allow yourself to get hit by the Indian Deathlap or not. Most weak king players are just going to go for the king's bridge because it does the most damage. So you can almost always start by just mashing one plus two if you get hit by this. You can guarantee that you're not going to take 85 damage and lose almost half of your health. Instead, you can go for a modest Scorpion Deathlock or STF, which is basically the same as getting hit by a normal command throw anyway. Then they can just go for the Scorpion Deathlock for free, which will then allow them to just get a free 55 damage, and you don't want to get them that for free either. So while most of the time you want to tech the King's Bridge, you also want to occasionally tech the Scorpion Deathlock or the STF. And obviously, if all these options will kill, it doesn't really matter, just take a guess. The Arm Breaker is a chain throw that starts with a one break, and if you fail the one break, you are presented with three options, one of which diverges into two higher damage options. So basically, when you think about it, there is the standard game. The two option does the middle amount of damage, the one option does the least amount of damage, and the one plus two has the potential to do even more. However, that one is actually very unlikely because, again, it requires the King player to be right twice in a row, which is very unlikely. Here we have the expected values, which tell us that we need to tech the struggle combination. And that is very true. The 1 plus 2 break is best against predictable, low rank king players, as they default to try to get the highest damage option against ranks that don't know their breaks. But versus high level kings, this is basically a 50-50 between struggle combination and triple arm breaker. If they do go for the chicken wing face lock, just tech 2 to avoid the rolling death cradle, as the dragon sleeper finish is basically the same as struggle combination, but with extra steps. If you initially tech one or two, you left the other option open anyway, so you were allowing the Dragon Sleeper finish from the beginning, if that makes sense. So getting hit by Dragon Sleeper finish isn't really that bad. And here we have the Cobra Clutch. The Cobra Clutch is a different type, where instead you have individual guesses. Um, each break can either be a one break or a two break, and there are certain points where King can decide to cash out by pressing the 1 plus 2 and end the throw early. Each guess is reliant upon the previous one being correct. So for example, the reverse DDT is only available if the King player succeeds with the Cobra Clutch. This chain throw tree is also an example of one option having multiple breaks as opposed to each option having its own break. The value of this chain throw drastically decreases over time. For example, the chance of getting the Cobra Clutch is 50%, whereas the chance of getting the Screwdriver, which is 116 total damage, is 0.78125%. To put this in perspective, you have a better chance of guessing a coin toss correctly six times in a row than landing a Screwdriver against a attacking opponent. Try it, it's not easy. In short, when you get hit with this chain throw, it, don't panic, this chain throw is kind of bad. The overall expected value of this chain throw is 48.20, and the reason why is because the value diminishes more and more and more. You start with the Cobra Twist, then you have the Reverse DDT. As you can see, the value drops off a cliff because you have to get right, right twice in a row to get here. Then you have Samurai Rock, which does 69 damage, and this is the most valuable point. Then you have the Backdrop, where it continues to decrease, and then you have the Sol Naciente, which has slightly higher value than Screwdriver, again, because of the chances of you actually getting this correct. So essentially, um, the overall values and how you want to look at this is this. The Standing Heel Hold is King's strongest one, and has an expected value of 62.70. Tech 1 plus 2, if you think they are going for King's Bridge, just take a guess between 1 and 2. The Arm Breaker, Mashing 2 is the safest option against low rank versus Kings, just tech 1 plus 2. With the Cobra Clutch, at Cobra Twist or Backdrop, tech 1 plus 2, not at the other point, just guess between 1 and 2. Knowing this will give you the best option versus King's Throw Game. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Again, make sure to check the description and check out the uh, things I linked below, Majin Obama's channel, then the article that I read for studying about expected value for this video. And again, let me know if you want to see others' videos about the math behind other Tekken characters, such as Tekken 7 Armor King or Tekken 8 Nina with her chain throws. I love to make more videos like this. Thank you guys very much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.